Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Marika from Me and Minimi Crafting and thank you for joining us today. Today we have something special planned for you. This video is made together with Pia Larsen from Pia's Creative World. Back in the summer we put our creative minds together and decided to do a video collaboration. Our initial idea was that in this first round I'll choose three cards of hers and make some embellishments and send them to her. Then she finishes the card. Sounds fun, doesn't it? When I went through Pia's cards, I just couldn't choose only three. There were so many stunning cards. Pia's designs are also so clever. She uses stamps, dies and stencils in a way that I normally couldn't even thought about using them. For example here, you might think that this card is first heat embossed with white embossing powder and then used embossed resist technique. No 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 no! Pia inked up the stencil and used that as a stamp. Another splendid idea was to make her own stamps out of dyes and fun foam. She's also so super nice that she always shares her techniques with either photo tutorial or on a video. And by the way, her videos are excellent quality. I highly recommend checking out her YouTube channel and her blog. Bia was also the first one who won Altenius video challenge and if you look at her winning card and the techniques she used in it, it isn't any wonder why both of her videos were ranked as highly as they could. On a winning video she used dyes and soldering iron to make these wonderful squeezy saffron pillows to use as an embellishment in her card. So I mainly used this card over here as my inspiration for my embellishments. I just love the moon on the dark night sky and those trees are a perfect match for the background. So I decided that I will make many different things for her so that she has plenty to choose from. So I ended up sending her all this stuff here and asked her to use whatever she wanted. She chose to use the moon, the trees and the snowman. And now I will show you how I made these and then Pia will show you how she finished up the card. So let's start with the moon. I used Altenius to the moon set to create my moon. First, I stamped the middle layer with Simon's stamp smoke ink onto a piece of white cardstock. Then I used W plus 9 fairy dust pure color ink to stamp the detailed layer of the moon. Then for the last layer, I used the base layer of the moon set and stamped it with W plus 9 falling star ink. I stamped the moon in this order only because it is easier for me to get them lined up. You can stamp them in which order it is easiest for you. And as you know me, I love details, so I added shading with Dervant Melic pencils to get the moon look more round and real. As critters in this card, I used Daisy Yakula's image called Joe the Skating Snowman. I stamped him onto the Canson watercolor paper with Versafine Onyx Black Ink. Versafine ink is oil based, so it is not going to bleed when you use water to blend the colors. For the coloring I used Durvent Inktense pencils and I list all the colors that I used in the upper left corner for your convenience to see what colors I use. What I like to do in particular with Inktense pencils is to color with layers. I add layer after another and by doing that you gradually build up your image. Inktense pencils are water soluble ink pencils so you can blend them with water but after the ink dries it becomes permanent so you can add layers after layers on top of each other and the colors don't blend anymore. When I blend the ink from Inktense pencils I usually like to use my water brush. You can use a traditional brush as well, it works fine too. But Inktense pencils doesn't really need a lot of water to blend, so what I do with my water brush, I squeeze the water to my brush and then I roll the water brush onto a clean piece of paper to get the excess water out. The water brush you see in here is quite dry and that way I'm able to maintain more control over the colors and where they are going on a paper. That way you're also able to maintain more vibrant colors because the more water you add, the lighter the colors will be. At this point, I'm finishing up the base layer of Joe. 
After that I will be adding another layer and deepen the shadows a bit. I'll do this in this order to give the first layer time to dry before adding another one on top. It will take a few minutes to color Joe, so I'm gonna turn on some music and let you enjoy the coloring. Now Joe is almost colored and all happy. I wanted to make it easier for Pia, so I fussy cut Joe out for her. This Canson watercolor paper is very easy for cutting images like this. The paper is quite thin and it is quite flexible. I use kid scissors for cutting, mainly because they fit into my tiny hands better than normal sized scissors. And after I had cut out my images, I usually go around the edges with black marker to get the image look more finished. Well, this was my part of the video. Hopefully you've enjoyed and thank you very much for your time. Now we have the pleasure to see what Pia have in mind for the rest of the card. Please enjoy! Hi, this is Pia. Now it is my turn to take over from Mariga and start creating with the thing that she sent to me. As you already know, I decided to use the moon, the snowman and the trees. Now, I didn't want to, how do you say, mess up the card with the moon. So I decided to use a sort of different technique. So I took another piece of watercolor paper and now I want to create a night scene, a winter night scene. And I have chosen different colors of distressing. The first thing I want to create is my night sky. Now I've chosen five different colors of blue and gray uh, in distressing, and I'm using just a piece of glass where I've put on a bit of the uh, distressing. Not the black one, because the black one is so intense that you have to be very delicate when you use it. First off, I wet my card, my uh, piece of paper giving it a good layer of water. You can see I have a, a pencil line on my card and that's because that is to know where my night sky sort of ends and my countryside begins. The first thing I do is that I start off adding some of this dressing with my water pen, my water brush, sort of say. Um, in the beginning, it looks quite messy, but it always does when you are working with watercolour. Now, I'm not as talented with watercolour or, how do you say, um, the uh, pens, the alcohol pens, Copic pens, as Marika uses. She's brilliant with these. 
Now for me, it just says, I'm trying as I go. And I had to Google winter night skies to get an idea of how the colouring and how the light and the darkness of the sky looks during the winter. Because the winter sky is so much different than a summer sky. Well, it, it is here in Denmark, in Scandinavia, where I live. Also, I know that when we have snow, the light, the moonlight, reflects on the snow. So the sky is a lot lighter uh, when it's close, closer to the ground. And it gets darker and darker and darker the further up you, you look. Now, in the end here, I'm adding now the black distressing. And here I'm just tapping, taking my water brush and just tapping it on the uh, directly from the ink pad. And this way, well, I kind of feel it, that I can control the black better. The One of the perfect things with distressing is that they really mix and blend well together. One other thing you have to keep in mind is that when you're working with wet um, paints or uh, watercolour, the colour seems a lot more intense when it's wet, but it gets lighter when it dries. So next up, I'm going to create the frozen lake because I have, I have a snowman from Marika on skates. So it made sense for me to create a frozen winter lake. Um, just sort of hidden in the snow and we all know that usually when you think water you think clear but in winter a frozen lake has dark almost black spotches, spots so I am now using a rather dark grey combined with a very bright light blue if that's the perfect way, word for it and the first thing I did was that I, I used my water, breast, water brush uh, just to make the area wet where I wanted my leg to be. And then I started on adding the grey colour and then adding the blue just here and there. And I'm working all the time just trying to get a kind of realistic look or at least as close to it as I can. Also here, I did a bit of Googling to find pictures, photographs showing it. Now here you see the moon. I went ahead and I actually die cut the moon with a circle die. This was my way of sort of saying, okay, now I don't sort of mess up the piece that Marika sent to me because I'm going to make a window in my front panel so that the moon can peek through I thought that was kind of a cute idea and it was a perfect solution for my card and for this video collaboration with Marika. Now I'm just trying to put together my card. I'm lining up my tree line and I'm putting on the snowman. Now I can position my sentiment. I'm choosing one from a Mama Elephant stamp set and I thought this with the sentiment using the word sparkle was perfect for, for, for a winter moon. Now, sorry about my head, it kind of pops in now and then. It's the uh, sort of you work habit or when you're crafting, you always want to get a really good look of what you're doing and not always think about where the camera is. Well, it happens. I'm using some what's it called, Mono Tombow glue. Um, and yeah, now I actually messed up. I was trying to get a controlled flow of the glue and what happens, I get a major blob instead. But you know, you try the best you can to save things. So instead I end up using my finger and just dabbing on the glue here and there. Perfect save, thank goodness. Um, using my tweezers to just get a nice position off the tree line. I don't know about you but no matter what I always think my fingers is like 
10 thumbs sometimes and a pair of tweezers really helps, helps me a lot. Now the next thing is I've die cut a piece of fun foam and I've also made the window so it matches up. And this way the card won't get squished if I'm sending it in the mail. Now I'm adding a bit of double sided tape so I can put on the moon. And basically now my card is finished. I did actually add a bit of Wing of Stella to the moon and the frozen leg just to give it a fine, nice finishing touch.